look at you guys. Look at his belly, guys. Look at look at his cute little belly. I'm a good boy not being fishy. He doesn't usually like his belly touched. But I'm doing it anyway. I'm risking life and limb for content, okay? So leave a like if you like, buddy. Um, now I'll make sure to clear the workspace of his hair before we begin. Huh, buddy. But he's cute. His eyes are beautiful. And he loves petties, so it's all worthwhile. He's a good boy. Bees. They're all the rage right now. I'm sure you've all seen the trend. Sorry, the cat hair. Sorry. Of the bees. And I honestly never got on board with it because I heard people talking about how they hate the bee trend because it's everywhere. And I figured by now the bee trend would have disappeared. It hasn't. It's probably the most popular thing that you see on the internet now in terms of amigurumi. So because of it, I decided to join it and why fight it? Because honestly, these little guys are so cute, so precious. So we're going to do a tutorial on it and I'm going to show you how to crochet these cute little bees. And I'm going to show you two different methods to crochet the wings, one for sewing and one for a no-sew pattern. And that way you guys can pick which one you prefer. I personally like the sewing more, but I know that a lot of people don't like sewing. That's why I've included the no-sew. So, 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 let's just get right into it and I'm going to gather our supplies and then we will get somewhere. So first thing you're gonna need is some yarn. So I have this really nice yellow yarn. It's kind of a light yellow, which I think is more attractive. Um, if you're curious about the brand, it is, I love this yarn by, that I get from Hobby Lobby, excuse me. Um, and then I have it in black and white for the wings. Um, the coolest thing about the bee pattern is you can make different colors. I'm planning on making a whole bunch of colors just to have them because they're adorable. So, but we're gonna start with yellow because that's the color of a bee. So the next thing on the list, you'll need a crochet hook. I use a metal one because I think it works better than wood or plastic. I actually like plastic more, um, but they break easier. So you need a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook, a pair of scissors, and a needle. I'm actually going to use two for this. Um, I may end up only using the small one though. Because it's such a small pattern, this one is just, it's harder to work with. Um, but I love my long needles, so. Uh, you can also use plastic if you want. Uh, I have plastic, but the heads might be a little too big depending on your needle, which can make it a little tricky and just annoying. So I like to stick with metal, especially when working with acrylic yarn. So next you're gonna need some stuffing and you're not gonna need very much of this. You're only probably gonna need about that much. So the coolest part about this pattern as well, I know I've said that already, you really don't need stuffing. So if you don't have stuffing on hand, you can just use some scrap yarn or some yarn that you don't like to work with and you can use that to stuff the doll because you really only need a tiny, tiny bit, probably half of this. So. You don't need the stuffing, you can stuff with yarn instead. If you need a stitch marker, you can bring one in. I find that the pattern's so small that I just end up counting the stitches more than marking any. Um, but if you need a stitch marker, I'll show you where to place it. I won't be using one though. I'll just show you where to put it if you end up using it. So the final thing that you need is safety eyes or R safety eyes, whatever the right word is. And you need six millimeter safety eyes and their backs. I lost a small one in here, so I'll find it later, no big deal. And then their backs. Little tiny safety eyes. If you don't have six millimeter, if you don't have six millimeter safety eyes, you can 
just embroider eyes instead. Um, I like the look of the safety eyes. It kind of gives it a little bit more of a professional look like I tried, which hopefully you will try this pattern. So the first thing we're going to start with is the no sew pattern. Let me find the other one. So I only made two of these. You can see that I like the, the sewing one more. So this one can tend to be a little more complicated, which is why I included the, both the sewing and the no sew. Um, I try my best to explain it using my voice. Should make this a lot easier than trying to explain it in text. Um, but yeah, let's just get right into it. Um, I'll have the pattern on the screen for you. So you should be able to see it when it comes up. Um, but I'll also be telling you how to do it. So whichever you choose or both. So we're first going to start with making a slip knot. And the slip knot's made by wrapping your yarn around your fingers. If you prefer the magic ring method, go ahead and start with magic ring. I use chain two for everything. So that's what I'm going to do. So in your first chain or in your magic ring, you're going to do six single crochets. And six. And then you can double count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. Close up your hole. And that is the end of round one. Now, if you're going to mark your stitches, you mark it right here. And you'll mark it in that last stitch for the entire pattern. I find that I don't need it, so I won't be using it. Uh, uh, yeah, that's how you do it. <laughs> Second round, we start with increasing. And we're going to increase in each stitch around for a total of 12 stitches or six increases. So this is one, and I'll count my head so you guys don't get confused. Okay, this is the last increase. Um, and then this is the end of round two, and it is our only increasing round. It kind of shows you how small the pattern is, which is kind of epic. Buddy! Sorry. Guys, my buddy is... My cat is doing some weird things, so hopefully he's fine. So, <laughs> round three is single crocheting in each stitch around, and so is round four. So, for the next two rounds, you will be just single crocheting and then we'll get into the color changes so like I said I'll count my head so I don't confuse you if you choose to count um, and sorry if I'm going a little fast I always forget to pace myself when doing tutorials if I am going too fast you can just slow the video down or pause it to catch up I don't mind if you put my voice in slow motion and make me sound all weird. It's fine. Okay, almost back around. Oop. Okay, so that is the end of the single crochet rounds. So you can see we have one round, the increase, and then two single crochet rounds. The next step in the pattern is to actually color change. So if you have a preferred method of color changing, go ahead and do it. Otherwise, I'm going to do my preferred method, which is cutting the yarn. And I know that that ends up using more yarn than other methods, but it's just the easiest way that I've come across to keep the lines as straight as possible. And it's honestly a lot less complicated. So before moving on to the black color change, I'm going to inside out the work and I'm actually going to secure this end. Now I recommend doing this even if you use the magic ring because this end, whether you like it or not, will become looser and looser with time. As it ages, as it gets played with, etc., it will start to wear out. So the best way to avoid this is by tying two or three knots on the back side and tying them tight. The way I do this is I just insert my needle into a couple of the, 
the humps from the single crochets and then insert the yarn through and pull that tight. If I feel like my first one wasn't tight enough, then I'll do it three times. Otherwise, I usually just stick with two knots. So that's how you do it. And then the next step will be adding the eyes. So if you choose to color change a different way, you'll probably have two ends, which is why we're gonna put the eyes in now, because it'll be easier than having a finagle with both yarn colors. So the way I put the eyes in is I put them in between rounds two and three, and I like to set them lower on the face. This is so the bees have a little bit of a forehead, or you can put them evenly across, whichever, whichever way you want to do it. So one, two, and I'm going to put this one on the other side and I like to look at it and judge if that looks nice and I think it looks perfectly fine. Um, don't worry too much about this step because it's all handmade and even if the eyes are slightly off, it just kind of gives it more character and makes it look a little cuter. You want to try and avoid putting them on different rows though because that might look a little weird. Okay, look, I just keep getting cat hairs. Sorry guys, it's Buddy's fault. He sat on my table. So that is the head portion right there, done and ready to move on to the next step. So if you're color changing a different way, color change to black, otherwise you can follow along. I like to make a slip knot and keep the end as short as possible because it's not gonna go anywhere. I also like this method because you're tying knots the whole time. Oh, sorry, that's bloody. Also being bad, come here. Can you clear off his stool? Can you stay there? Can you stay there, bunny? Probably not. What I was saying was I like this method because it ties knots every time that you uh, fasten off and start a new one. So you don't have to worry about tying anything later, which is why one of the ways, one of the reasons why I prefer this method. Buddy? This is Buddy, aka Arthur. Oh! Sorry, don't rub on the camera. Sit down. Sit down. Let's just, let's just try and ignore him for a second. No, buddy. No, come here. Okay, experiencing technical difficulties. Give me a second. Okay, he's currently sitting in a basket. Hopefully he will stay there for the rest of this tutorial. And never mind, he came right back. <sighs> buddy. Guys, I'm really sorry. He, he thinks it's food time. He doesn't get food for another hour and a half, so I don't know what he's on about. Stay in the window, please. Okay, back to color changing. So I like to start my new color in the slip stitch that I left in the previous round. This kind of gives it a smoother transition. And then I single crochet into there. And since I single crochet in the slip stitch, I'm going to skip this stitch and move on to the next one. And for this round, you will be single crocheting all the way around for a total of 12 stitches. Buddy's looking at me really sad now that I've told him no. I'm sorry, buddy. I love you. He's still purring though, so I guess he's okay. Please stay in the window, buddy. Don't come out. Okay, I come back all the way around and the way I finish this round is by slip stitching into the first stitch and then chaining one and fastening off and leaving a little tiny tail. Um, color change as you wish though. If this is the only way you know how to color change, then that's awesome, follow me along. Okay, so the next round is yellow, so we'll be color changing to yellow and single crocheting all the way around, just like with the black yarn. Slip stitch, a single crochet in the slip stitch, skip that first single crochet, and single crochet in the next stitch. And then make sure you got 12 stitches. I keep ruining the tablecloth, sorry. Let's see.
Okay, when I get all the way back around, I'm going to slip stitch in that last single crochet, chain one, and fasten off. I don't think I have to tell you again, but color change any way you wish. You can see it's not perfect, but I feel like it's better than any other color changing I've tried. Oh, buddy. Sorry, buddy's back at it. Do you want to sit? Here. Give me a second. Come on. Get off my desk. Hey. You need to get your wet boogery nose off the desk. Sit right there. Good boy. Okay, I've recovered the black yarn. And hopefully Buddy will stay in my lap. Or should I say behind my lap? He sits in between my chair, which is kind of funny. He pushes me to the edge of the seat. Okay, I don't know what I was saying before, but we're color changing to black now. Oh. Buddy. I gotta let him out now. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, he decided to abandon us for the rest of the video. So hopefully he doesn't come knocking on the door later, which is... Something he likes to do. Okay, let's finish this video without any more interruptions, right? <laughs> we'll see. So, color changing to black. Like I said earlier, I single crochet into that slip stitch. I skip that first single crochet, and then I single crochet around for a total of 12 stitches. Okay, and if you are doing a different way of color changing, you can cut the black and the black yarn now because we will not be color changing anymore to black. Okay, so that is the end of this round, and we're actually going to do the wings now. Um, I'm going to try and explain it the best I can. It can get a little complicated though. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach the yarn to our hook and you want to leave a long enough tail that you can tuck it in and then what we're going to do we're going to find the center stitch of our yarn in the yellow round and you're going to insert your hook into that Excuse me, I forgot, you need to yarn over first and then insert your hook into there. Sorry <laughs> if I confused any of you for a second there. And then you're going to double crochet into that stitch. And before we go any further, make sure that it is centered as best you can. If you can't really get it centered, it's not going to be a big deal because nobody is going to notice if the wings are a little crooked. So into that same single crochet, we're going to double crochet three times. One, a total of three times. So three double crochets in that stitch. And then before we move on, we're going to slip stitch in that same single crochet stitch. Um, and depending on how tight your stitches are, this might be a little bit difficult, but I have faith in you. You'll figure it out. Slip stitch in that stitch and make sure you pull that stitch nice and tight. Now in the next single crochet, in the same yellow round, you're going to slip stitch and you're going to pull that stitch tight and you are going to double crochet. You're not going to chain or anything else, you're just going to double crochet three. One, this is a bit difficult for you, don't worry, it's a little bit difficult for me too. My stitches are nice and tight, which can sometimes be a problem. Okay, that is the third double crochet. So now what we're going to do is we're going to chain one and we're going to fasten off. And you want enough yarn to tuck the end in, but not too much yarn. So about the same length of what you slip stitched on to begin with. So. Depending on how tight your single cur your slip stitch was in between here, you might have this wiry little guy right here, which we're going to fix right now if you have that, and we're going to make it look really good. So you're going to need your needle, your smaller one. 
if you got two of them. And we're going to put this yarn, this end, right here. And we're going to pull it through nice and tight. If you want your wings to be more open, you can put it a stitch over so that it's lined up. I like to close the wings off a bit. This end is going to stay in here. Don't lose it yet because we do need to tie a knot to secure it on the back side. This is one of the reasons why I like this method though, is that you're securing the wings more tightly than you would if you sewed it. So now you're going to insert the, same, the other end into that same stitch and bring it through. Pull it nice and tight to round those wings out and you can see they're nice and cute. So before we tie the knot, we're going to insert our needle in between the black round and the yellow round that we put the wings in. We're going to wrap around this, this slip stitch right here and pull it back through. Uh, let me see if this will work with me, there we go. I'm gonna go under that white yarn and then put it right back through into the center. Just like so. And now the wings are almost fully complete. The last thing we're going to do is we're gonna tie the two white yarns together and do it nice and tight to keep everything secure. I forgot to mention at the beginning, or maybe I did and I forgot I mentioned, um, if you are doing the sewing method, like I'll show you later, you're just gonna skip this whole white part and try and put a timestamp on the screen on where you can skip to if you wanna skip right to the sewing method. Otherwise, you'll have to sit through this and make a decision. <laughs> if you sit through it though, you gain me more watch hours. Just, just saying. Okay, so I tucked all my ends in and to get them out of the way, because they're kind of annoying, uh, you do the same thing. If you color change a different way and you need to secure the black yarn, make sure you do that. Because of the way I color changed, I don't need to worry about that. So we're going to color change one last time to yellow and we're going to single crochet for another round, all the way around. Okay, I'm all the way back around and the next thing that I do because of the way I color change is I actually single crochet in the next stitch and then start decreasing. If you color change the same way I did, single crochet in the next stitch and if you didn't then you can just experiment. Um, I single crochet in the next stitch to keep the end of it nice and round. If I skip that single crochet, it kind of gets a little bit of a squareness to it, which I like to avoid. So pretend that single crochet is part of the previous round and then start decreasing to finish this round off. I forgot to mention earlier that you're going to need a uh, stuffing stick. I just use the end of a wooden pencil. Who uses those anymore, right? Uh, I don't know. I got it as Christmas present. I mean, it looks like Christmas. It's not Christmas time or anywhere near Christmas time, but it's all I had in my drawer. And I can't find any of my stuffing sticks. So when you're done with the decreases, slip stitch and fasten off, leaving a little bit of an end so that we can close this hole up. Now, depending on what you're gonna do with the bees will determine how stuffed you want them to be. I stuff them quite hard because I want them, I was thinking of turning them into keychains, um, but I think them being a little bit harder is nicer. Um, so stuff as you will. The way I stuff is I take a chunk of yarn, or stuffing, excuse me, actually I take a little bit more than that, and I start stuffing and I know that this is probably going to end up being too much stuffing so I'll show you how I deal with that once this is stuffed. So you want to kind of turn your piece around and stuff it. 
nice and hard if you're going for a firm otherwise you can stuff it looser or not at all it might be a little weird okay so when it gets to the point where it's harder to stuff i actually snip the stuffing be careful not to cut your end when you snip that would suck um especially if you cut it too short and then you stuff that little remaining bit in that's how I stuff these little tiny things without ripping it and pulling more out and having to shove more in and continuing that cycle for who knows how long. Just cut it. So I'm actually going to take my long needle because I left a long enough tail and we're going to close the hole up and then secure the end and we'll be done. The way that I secure my holes is by collecting each of the front loops like so and then pulling it very tight i actually do it for all six loops and then i tuck it back into those first two that i collected so that it completes the circle and i pull that really tight then i'm going to tie a knot uh, you especially want to tie a knot if you're going to give this to younger or even any type of child any age because the more it's used the more it's going to wear out and the faster these ends will open up again. So always tie knots, especially if you're selling things. And then I am going to thread this end through the doll and then back through twice more, one and two. And this is another way to secure your end. I find though it's not super effective because when if you get the end to start coming out you can actually pull it quite a ways before you hit the end so i like to tie the knot and then do the back and forth so that it's extra secure so that is how to do the no sew method you can see when compared to the sewing method the wings are a little bit smaller and they're a little bit less rounded so it's kind of up to you which one you prefer more. I like these because when you close the body up, you're done and you don't have to do anything else. When you close the body up on these, you still got to do the wings and you got to sew them on. So it's kind of up to your preference and for me, it depends on how I feel. So I now have nine bees and I need to make one more so that I can show you how to do the sewing method. So repeat everything that we just did to start the pattern and to close it except ignore the wing part so you're going to make it you're going to close it just like you would and you're going to end up with a pill which is what i'm going to work on right now in time lapse fashion and then we'll come back and i'll show you how to crochet the wing part and then sew it all together so i'll put the time stamp on where you can jump back and hopefully i'll remember to do that if i don't sorry in advance because I might forget all right let's just go into time-lapse mode and get this pill bee themed pill worked out So hopefully you just finished your P, uh, whoa, don't know where that came from, your B themed pill, if that's the proper word. And now we need to put wings on this little guy. And the wings, well, we'll just get right into it. So you're gonna start by chaining five. You're going to chain five. Had to think about it for a minute there, sorry. Two, three, four, and five. Okay, once you get your five stitches, you are going to yarn over and double crochet into that middle stitch. So the third stitch from your hook, and you're gonna double crochet. You'll have a chain two on this side and double crochet. 
then you're going to, in the exact same stitch, double crochet two more times. So you'll have three double crochets, a chain two. Now, in the next stitch, next chain stitch, you will slip stitch, just like so. Make sure that stitch is tight. And then you will be double crocheting four times into the next chain. One, two, sorry, won't count. Okay, and that is the double crochets. Now the final thing we're gonna do is we're going to pull this end over here, you're gonna leave it on this side, and you're going to slip stitch back into that chain that we slip stitched in earlier, except it's gonna be on the opposite side. And then chain one and fasten off. Pull that right up, close it up, and there you have your wings. They're cute and they're little, and now we have to sew them on. So, you're going to start with the longer end, okay, crochet hook, crochet hook on wild. <laughs> anyway, we are going to attach the wings to the bee base, and I like to do this on the slightly funkier looking side, the color change inside. For some reason this bee looks a little bit angry, that's okay, it's fine. So, if you need to pin it in place, you can, my pins are way too long, and I would totally just dab myself. So. Put it in place, make sure it's kind of centered, and then you're going to put your needle into in between the black row and the yellow row, and you're going to poke out on the other side of the yellow stitch. And if you're like me and you realize that you're going all sorts of wonky, move that yarn back to center. Then insert, insert your needle into that slip stitch right there, or the center of your wing. Pull that nice and tight. Now go back through that center and back out again. Pull it nice and tight. And to finish it up, we're actually going to slip stitch, or not slip stitch, put your needle back through that slip stitch and create like a little loop and pull that nice and tight. And that's gonna close that end. And we're gonna do the same thing on this side. Insert your needle into the center of the wing. Just gonna do it right here and then pull it through and just end up in a random place because we're done with this end. Pull it nice and tight. And before you finish anything off, give it the wiggle test. If it wiggles around and doesn't sit straight, continue to sew to secure it in place. But if you did what I just did, we should be good. Now insert that other end into the doll and bring it to the other end and just give it a nice tug. Now we're going to secure this end by tying it, tie a pretty tight knot. I lost the bee, hold on. There we go. And the next step that I do before tucking in two ends is I actually clip it so they're both the same length. This makes it easier to tuck in. You can do them both at the same time. Then we're going to tuck these ends in three times. Now the way I like to do this is I like to tuck it in away from where it originally came so that you're not pulling anything looser by tucking it in. Then, of course, like I said, do it three times. That was two. And this is three. There we go. And then you can use your needle to shape anything. Ugh, this tablecloth won't stay in place. I think I need to get some double sided tape or something that would help the issue. Is that the right way of saying that? Anyway, it doesn't matter. So there's your bee with your sewed on wings. So that's it. That's how you do it. That's how you crochet this cute little tiny bee. I give you permission to use this pattern as many times as you want to sell. I would appreciate a little tag on there 
at Loops and Knots Crochet. Um, I'm not going to hold you to it though because I can't. There's no way for me to hold you to it. So if you do use the pattern and you want to sell it, please credit me. If not, I'll just be a little bit sadder. And so that's the end of this pattern. There are two different ways to do it, the sewing and the no sew. It really is up to you which one you prefer. I think that the no sew looks a little flatter, but it might be easier for some people. Um, but then the sewing, I think, looks a little bit cuter. But you can do whichever method you want. Um, I would love to hear in the comments below if you which method you used. I would love to know if you prefer the sewing or the no sew. That will give me some more inspiration for future tutorials if I should focus on sewing patterns or no sew. I personally prefer sewing most of the time. It kind of depends on the project. If it's something small like this, I may end up doing the wings no sew regularly. It's kind of a sense of accomplishment when you close up the piece and you're done. So that's it for this tutorial. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you made this bee. I'd love to hear about it. Um, if you have any critiques on what I could change for the future, hey, I'm willing to listen. Hopefully I won't get a little, too, a little upset. This is my first tutorial with my voice, so hopefully it sounded great to you guys. I felt like I did a good job, so hopefully, hopefully, hopefully that is how you feel too. And I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed making your little bees. I hope you liked both methods equally for their own personal, whatever the word is, reasons. <laughs> Anyways, before I continue rambling forever, I'm just going to close it out. So thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, week, month, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!